This is Right from the Deep. I'm Karen Ball. And I'm Erin Taylor Young. And this is the podcast from writers for writers, answering the question, why am I doing this? Right. As writers, editors, and a former literary agent, we're in the deep with you, encouraging you and equipping you to find your truest story in the deep places. Get our show notes and more, including a free audio download on how to safeguard your writer's heart at writefromthedeep.com. Hey guys, here's what's happening at Right From The Deep. First, thank you, a big, huge, ginormous thank you to all our patrons on Patreon. You guys, you help make this podcast possible and we appreciate you. And we have openings for our Patreon sponsor of the month. You'll get to advertise your books or services or website or whatever you want to advertise. You get a banner and a link on the website and in the show notes, an announcement here in the show. For more information, check out patreon.com forward slash right from the deep. And I am honored and really excited to be teaching at PenCon this year. PenCon is an interactive virtual conference for editors and proofreaders. And this year it'll be May 3rd through 5th. And it is the only conference designed to connect Christian editors and proofreaders with other industry professionals. It's going to be three days and have live chats and Q&A in every session and one-on-one appointments with faculty and daily Zoom fellowship and all kinds of cool stuff. So visit PenCon, P-E-N-C-O-N, editors.com for more information. And what are you going to be teaching? Oh, I'm going to be teaching two sessions. The first one is going to be staying focused on the big picture edit. And the second one is going to be talking about how to nurture hope. And it's my turn for the wonder. And for me, it's the many things that I discover here in Washington, as opposed to in Oregon. We have the one main highway that goes from the west side of the state that comes through Gold Bar and keeps going east. It's called Highway 2. It's a two-lane highway. There's nowhere to pull off. But as I've been taking that highway back and forth to places, I've noticed out in certain fields hundreds of big white birds. Big, (laughs) really big birds. Finally, one day as I was going past them, I happened to see, um, because they're usually all curled up like in a ball. You can't see anything but big white bodies. But but one day as I was driving past, I saw that they had black on their bill. And some of them, I could see their feet and their feet were black. So I went to my niece who works at the Woodland Park Zoo here in Seattle and talked with her about it. And son of a gun, they are migrating Trumpeter swans. I have never seen them before. (laughs) And you all know how much I love birds. And here are hundreds of these huge, beautiful birds. And though I haven't been able to find any place to pull off and take pictures, there's a picture in my mind. And that, too, is the wonder that God gives us the ability to see something, to retain it, and then enjoy it. And over and over and over again. So I'm grateful to God for his creative beauty and genius and the way he helps us to remember it. Cool. And now, here's the show. Hello, friends. Welcome into the deep today. And we are so excited to have a guest who Aaron will introduce. But we're going to talk about the reality of detours, whether they're health or otherwise in our writing journey and how they often turn out to be exactly God's intended road for us. Yeah. So I'm excited to introduce Lori Ann Wood. She currently serves as founding leader of the Parenting Education Ministry at the Church of Christ in Bentonville. She also serves as Women Heart Champion Community Educator for Arkansas and American Heart Association Ambassador. And you guys, I bet we'll be talking about some of the reasons why. <laughs> Lori Ann was awarded the Frederick Beekner Narrative essay award and her work has been published in numerous print and online venues including heart insight magazine the christian century magazine just between us magazine the joyful life magazine pepperdine (laughs) university press and so much more (laughs) having discovered a serious heart condition almost too late Lori ann writes to encourage others to ask their difficult faith questions along the detours of life Lori ann's first book divine detour 
detour. The path you didn't choose can lead to the faith you've always wanted. Just released with Cross River Media. So that's exciting. Lorianne, we are glad to have you here today. Welcome. Oh, thank you. It's so great to be here. Um, so let's just jump in. What, Lorianne, does the deep mean to you? The deep to me is mostly when I personally am taking my faith to the point where I'm going deep enough because I think we get to a certain point in our faith sometimes and we stop because we don't want to go any deeper because we don't know what the answers might be or where we might end up. And so to me, the deep is not being afraid to go in there and ask those questions and dig and dig and dig. And so that's where I'm coming from when we're talking about the deep. Mm. I love it. And I know from a little bit I've learned about you that you have certainly faced deep places of trial and struggle. So I'd love for you to start off just by sharing that, you as a person, what, what's been going on. I got a very out of the, well, I felt like it was an out of the blue diagnosis about seven years ago. I thought I had the flu or maybe I thought, could be pneumonia. I hadn't had pneumonia. I was just a little draggy. My kids were coming in for the holidays and I was still functioning and doing all the things, but I wasn't myself. And I knew I didn't have the energy that I should, but because it was a holiday week, it was Thanksgiving week, I didn't go to the doctor. I went to convenient care a couple of times, but I didn't go see my family doctor until the Friday after Thanksgiving. And he immediately looked at me, listened to my heart with a stethoscope like they always do, and took me to the x-ray lab and said, if we're lucky, it's pneumonia. <laughs> That's and a little scary. There's something yeah. you don't want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I'm thinking that's the worst case, right? And what he found on that x-ray was that my heart was very enlarged. Cleveland Clinic uh, cardiologist later told me it was the largest heart she'd ever seen. Wow. Oh my and word. I was immediately admitted to cardiac ICU and my heart was functioning at 6%. And <sighs> I, I had no idea. I had, it was to me just unbelievable. I had no family history. I had no risk factors. I had great cholesterol and low blood pressure. Oh and God. people were, I had actually done a evaluation for a life insurance policy about a month before that. And they said, your numbers are so good. You have less than 3% chance of ever developing heart disease. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> and, then I was, and then I found myself in the hospital and they diagnosed me with end-stage heart failure oh. and had no, no idea, no clue, didn't know what it was and started on this journey uh, in really in my health, but more importantly in my faith and have been on that journey for about seven years. Okay, so were you a writer at the time or did writing come about then because of this? I think I'm like a lot of people. I felt like I had a book lurking around in the back of my head somewhere, but I still had kids at home and I was teaching college at the time and just was not writing. I had ideas, you know, I'll write a book about how to plan children's birthday parties or <laughs> how to take a vacation on the cheap, you know, something like that. But I never, I never wrote. And then once I got this diagnosis and I couldn't stand up and speak for two hours at a time, hmm. I had to make a lot of adjustments in my lifestyle. And I found that I could sit at my computer and I could type all day long. And so this book started and really the whole writing journey started because I wouldn't have taken the time to do it in a safer, healthier life. Wow. You know, I love how ironic that is. It's like my life is all, you know, now everything is gone. Everything's been ruined. So I'm going to write, you know, it's it's like now that my health is terrible. Hey, let's write. <laughs> you know? Exactly. I didn't want to even start writing anything down. But my husband told me when I was in ICU, he said, we should be writing down what's going on. Mm. And I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to relive it. 
And I did, I wanted to just get back to my normal life. I wanted this to be kind of a blip on the radar and back to the normal planned route. And so I was in denial, but I did eventually start writing things down. We've had a couple of previous podcasts talking about focus and how to maintain focus as writers and, and the things that take away from focus. But in this case, God brought about this focusing of what it was that you were to do because you couldn't do any of those other things. Like you said, if you'd had a healthier lifestyle and, and we're still teaching and with the kids and everything, you couldn't do that. But, but to discover that this is what you could do, I see that, you know, from that step back perspective, I see that as God saying, this is your task and this is how I'm going to make sure that you do the task that I have for you. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's one of the things I think back on several times is in one of my heart failure groups, and I don't, I think Anonymous wrote this, like so many other wise things that come out of Anonymous, but it said, not all storms come to destroy your life. Some storms come to clear your path. And I really felt like this storm cleared my path. I mean, another way to look at it is a lot of doors closed at that time. And by eliminating options for me, I was able to focus down the hallway to the door that was open and bypass all those closed doors. Hmm. I can see, though, that there would have been a great deal of reluctance because all of the sudden, like, you are faced with this life-threatening situation And, you know, who wants to go there? That's really scary. And not just, I mean, as you say, you wanted it to be a blip, but now you have to dive into it. You have to embrace it. And that's, that's scary. How, how did you find courage to do that? I don't know if I'm trying to, I'm wrestling with the word courage because what I did at first, my, a friend of mine dropped by a little notebook in my ICU room. I maybe had been there a couple days at that point. And it was just one of those little spiral notebooks. And I think she meant for me to write down doctor's notes or medications or instructions for the kids or something like that. And what it ended up being is in the middle of the night when I would wake up, I would just write down complaints almost to God, some angsty statements. I don't get this. I don't understand. Where are you? Why are you not showing up? And I just started writing that down. And so that was one little element that was happening. The other thing that started happening at that time is because I had this health situation, I started a blog because it was just easier to keep people up on my health news that way. Yeah. And Eventually, stuff from that little notebook seeped into the blog, and that started resonating with people, not people who were necessarily on a health detour, but for people that were on a relationship detour or a career detour or whatever kind of detour they happen to be on. They're like, mm, that, I don't know anything about heart failure, but this seems a lot like what I'm wrestling mm-hmm. with. And so... That's when I knew, that's when I sort of dug in and thought, okay, I think I know what I need to be sharing now. And that was where the courage came from, if you can call it that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but I I think what happened was it, it built very slowly. It started with just frustration. It started with just these this little tiny step of writing something down in that notebook and then you took that next step. It was like you you just kind of nudged. You got, God kind of just nudged your step, small baby steps. And it did bloom into something that seemed courageous because pretty soon you're exploring, you know, what's going on. You're exploring the deeper questions that God is calling you to explore and ask and find solutions for. So let's talk about that. In your writing journey, you were working on this book. It turned out to be the book that we talked about, the Divine Detour book. And you came up with some questions that every life must answer. And I love that. Talk a little bit about what those questions are and what they meant and how they apply to writers. Yes. When I started looking at everything I had been writing at some point, 
I put every title and every idea on a sticky note and started to move them around and figure out how am I going to make sense of all this stuff that was just sort of bubbling out of my experience at the time. And everything inside me wanted it to be chronological. I Mm. wanted it to have a beginning and an end. And I even had my sections figured out. I was going to have my diagnosis and my device because I have an internal device and then a downturn that I got later. And the alliteration was there and I was (laughs) liking that. It felt right. And then what happened was three years ago, I experienced kind of a downturn in my health and I, I had this sort of feeling like, I don't know the end of the story. Mm. I thought before I could write from beginning to end, but I don't know the end of the story. And so that made me pause for a while. And then when I looked at those little sticky notes again, I happened to be studying about Jesus's 40 days in the desert at that point and the three temptations. And it struck me that those temptations are really just internal questions that we ask ourselves. Hmm. And those questions looked a lot like three buckets that my little sticky notes were trying to go into. Yeah. And I felt like I was onto something. And so I started exploring these questions and putting them out to people that were reading my blog and, and other people that had, you know, supported my writing along the way. And they said, I've asked those same three questions. After listening to everything that Lori has been through, I bet you guys are just on the edge of your seat waiting to hear what those questions are. Well, you'll do so in the next episode. So stay tuned and we'll visit with Lori Ann again. Thanks for joining us today. You can find previous episodes and more resources at writefromthedeep.com. And I bet you know someone who needs this podcast, so please share it with them. So until next time, embrace the deep. Your writing and your life will never be the same. Mm-hmm.